Thank you to Caseify for sponsoring this video. So I don't think I've ever made one of these videos, but I always like watching them. We're gonna talk about today what's on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So the first thing that you see on your phone, of course, is your lock screen. Uh, and most of these images I actually captured myself. Uh, but you know, pictures of the family, you know, pictures went to San Francisco a couple years ago. Uh, but the photo that I've been rocking lately has been this one here. This is a, a combination of two photos. It's actually uh, the skyline from LA, or not the skyline, but the sky from LA. Uh, it was actually on the same day I took this photo. Uh, but it was the sunset and also the mountains from Convict Lake. So I've been rocking that lately. Super simple. I don't keep much on my lock screen. I don't like widgets and everything. I don't, I don't like too much clutter. So it's just pretty much the time widget and my wallpaper. But going into the phone itself, uh, my layout is pretty straightforward. I keep most of the apps that I don't access frequently up here in the top left corner uh, with the exception of Google. I tap that one quite often. One of the biggest uh, themes on my phone is you'll notice I don't really like the built-in Apple uh, stuff. I like a lot of the Google stuff. So I have Google Mail, I have Google Maps, I have Google Calendar, Google Search. Um, I use a lot of Google stuff. The actual newest addition to my home screen is gonna be this guy right here. This is YouTube Tracker. Uh, so YouTube Tracker, I've actually been using the application for pff, years now, um, but they recently updated it. I got the update today uh, that actually added this widget here. So this widget is pretty much your subscriber widget. It tells you within the last seven days, your subscriber growth. Pretty dope just to have it at a glance there. You can see I just hit 11,000 subscribers today. This number actually updates uh, throughout the day. And it depends, I believe, on the size of your channel and some other variables as far as how often it updates. Um, but yeah, I just hit 11,000 subscribers today. So it's pretty up to date and accurate. Uh, but aside from the widget itself, YouTube tracker is pretty dope just for knowing some a, a few quick analytics at a glance. Um, back when I was really hunting down the uh, monetization guidelines of trying to get 4,000 watch hours, um, I was you know loading this up periodically just to see where I was at. So it gives you a rolling 12 months uh, where, if, where you're at as far as having those 4,000 hours. And of course you have the all time subscriber count of at least a thousand subscribers. The basic of most basic uh, statistics on views and also subscriber growth. Uh, every day. You can also use it to promote. I actually use this all the time for uh, uh, templates, for stories, for posts, uh, stuff I share to uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I actually used it today to promote the newest video, the Snap Phone iPhone filters. So I actually created the template straight from here to sh do shuffle templates where they give you like a mock-up template based on all the random things that you can add on there from the overlay background text to color. You can change a few different things, the opacity. You have different YouTube icons you can add on there. Once you link your account as all your video thumbnails that you've you know had it in all your videos so you can quickly access it there you can also enter a video link and it'll extract the thumbnail from that video so that way you can promote it straight on the template so yeah this is a really useful application that i use all the time uh but yeah it gives you all kind of stuff instagram stories you can do you know pick a thumbnail where you ask your audience which thumbnail works uh, which one would you click on there's tons of stuff on there you new youtube video you know don't miss this they have tons of stickers that you can add straight to uh your instagram stories one that i definitely recommend using um and i've been using it for years it's called yt tracker and since we're talking about what's on my iphone let's talk about what's actually on my iphone <laughs> this is the case to five bounce case and also i have been using this bounce case for quite some time now even before they sponsored this video this is the same bounce case that i've been using for like two, three months now. And now we're gonna do something that I have never done ever in life, and that's actually do a drop test. But before we get to the drop test, there's a couple things I'm gonna add that Casetify sent me over just to ensure that my phone is protected. One is gonna be their lens protector. So these lenses on all the iPhones, of course, protrude a bit, but this actually gives you some coverage without compromising the image quality. I also have, of course, the screen protector, and there you go. Once you put the camera lens protector on, it's actually completely flush with the back of the case. The bounce case also has 21.3 drop proof protection. So with the eco shock that's built into the side of the case, if you drop it, it just simply bounces. It has these really cool expanded corners to feel really durable. And also like the fact that durable cases aren't super bulky uh, like they used to be in the past. Durable cases have gotten slim. They perfected the technology inside of them. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, having a belt clip or some obnoxiously huge case just to protect your phone. And the clear case is drop tested at 6.6 .6 feet and exceeds military grade drop test standards. Now Case Defy is sponsoring this video, but I am very picky about the sponsors on this channel because I don't want to endorse something that I don't use. I use the Case Defy bounce case and I have been using it for the past like two months. 
and I love it. And if you want to check it out, be sure to use my unique link down below in the description. I am a Spotify user. I, I have, uh, what is it, Apple One or whatever, where it includes all the services into one, and I have like my wife on there and all that. But uh, for music, I, I use Spotify mostly because I just enjoy the playlisting. I love the AI that's on here. I feel like it normally just gets it right. If I were to just go to my created playlist for every day of the week, it normally has something on there that I want to listen to. So I use Spotify mostly. Google Maps is just better than Apple Maps. <laughs> Pretty minimal, straightforward setup, honestly. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, but the uncommon social apps, the ones that you know you don't hear about all the time, we have Granary. Granary is pretty dope, and it's just a really cool social media platform for film photographers. Uh, so anything that's on here is film photography, and there's just a ton of people on here that just post really amazing photos. I don't have a lot of followers on there. Uh, it's pretty low key right now. I don't think a lot of people know about Granary, but it's a dope app. Film by Fresh on there. For anyone that's curious, the film cameras that I use are the Bronica Zenza ETR and the Olympus OM-1. I don't have any other film cameras, but that may change in the future. I may get a couple more, who knows. Uh, Vero. I'm kind of mixed on it, um, but I don't know how people find me on Vero. I don't know how to find people on here. I mean, you can go through and search, you know, uh, users and hashtags, of course, but it just feels like it's just so much on Vero. Like, it's like, what is this, Vero Amplify? Is it singers and songwriters, noteworthy photographers, news, cosplay, podcasts, reviewers, friendly connectors, arts, it's just, it's just movies, TVs, games. It's just so much on Vero where it's not just photos, you know, it's not just, you know, sharing content, which is probably cool, but there's like books, places, apps, there's just so much on this application and it just feels like it's just too much. Um, uh, but yeah, if you wanna follow me on here, I'm also filmed by Fresh on here. Uh, yeah, that's Vero. Another application that is not very uh, known is Glass. It's another one of those anti-Instagram kind of platforms where, you know, people are just getting tired of Instagram. It actually has a decent amount of engagement on here as well. I like that it doesn't show like follower count and followers and all that stuff right at a glance because it's not, it doesn't feel like it's really about that, you know, uh, which is good to kind of get away from the analytics and everything and just admire the images. Glass is a really cool application if you just want to go through and just admire some pictures. It's minimal. You can search people. These are members. You can go by categories. You can go by cameras or lenses. So that way you can find stuff easily. It's a lot more streamlined and minimal versus Vero. But yeah, this is glass. I like glass. Glass is pretty dope. Darkroom's dope. Um, I just love the fact that it kind of replicates a uh, actual NLE. I feel at home when I'm editing the pictures on here, so I, I'm not gonna edit this picture, but this is some random AI picture of me. But say for instance, you wanna go in here, you can apply filters. Of course, that's you know something that we're used to from every photo editing application. You can go deeper into the settings. They have different luminance masks, linear masks, radial masks, all kind of stuff that you can do, depth masks, all kind of stuff. Pretty intense as far as the uh, control it gives you. It reminds me of a lot of Lightroom, but it gives you, you know, clarity, highlights, uh, texture, vibrance. You can adjust, you can do split toning, the highlights and the shadows, all kind of stuff. You can adjust the curves, you can adjust the different colors. So if I wanted to take out all the blue in this, I could take out all the blue, this entire photo and, you know, have it be just my skin tone will pop, you know, wheels. So you can adjust the global, the highlights, the midtones, the shadows. You can also add different frames. If I want to have, you know, a cool artistic frame, I can adjust the color of the frame. You do cropping, of course. You have different aspect ratios that are very popular from square to four by five for Instagram, five by four, nine by 16, cinematic aspect ratios. This is probably my go-to photo editing application. All right, I have to go put some lotion on. Why didn't y'all tell me I was ashy? Well, let me wipe out the screen too. So catch 22 putting lotion on and doing these videos because then you get your screen all gunky. Hold on. There we go. All right, so I de-ashed myself. If you want to actually export this, it's pretty dope. You have a few different options. You can actually save it and replace the original image, which is cool. You can save it as a copy. You can actually export it and you know, and copy hashtags and all that good stuff. And you can also go into the settings here and adjust the video format. So you can do JPEG, TIFF, PNG, the heaps. <laughs> You can also do video as well, so you can export it in different bit rates and different codecs. So this is actually a really, really comprehensive, powerful application and one that I use most of the time when I'm editing photos. I don't really edit videos on here, but I have done a couple cool social clips, edited a few of those videos on here. But yeah, Darkroom is super dope. I highly recommend it. Moving over to some of the fun stuff, I have a few games on here. We have, of course, Clash of Clans. I've been playing that for like almost 10 years now. Uh, Clash Royale, I don't play that as much, but it's on here. Um, Alto's Adventure, which is dope, Grindstone, Skyforce, Pokemon Go. These are all the applications that, that, you know, all the games, I should say, that I play. Uh, 
periodically. After credits is super dope. I use it a lot of time, uh, really for its only intended purpose is <laughs> to know what's during and after credits of different movies. So if you're in the movie theater, you don't know if there's a during after credit scene for Avatar The Way of the Water, you can just go to your phone or go to your watch and uh, see what's going on and see if you should stay or you should leave, you know, get ahead of traffic. If you wanna see spoilers, you can go here and click spoilers and see what the credit is or the after credit scene is. So that way you can, you know, know ahead of time. Just Watch is really dope if you wanna know like what is playing and where it's playing. Being that there's so many different streaming platforms out there and services and, and you know, Paramount may have all the old Nickelodeon stuff and Netflix has this and Disney has that. You never know what's where. So say for instance, if you wanted to, you know, search up, you know, City of God and you wanted to know where City of God playing, where can I rent or buy that movie? This tells you, you can watch it right now on, you know, Apple TV, uh, whatever Fubo is, you can watch it there, Showtime, uh, YouTube, you can rent it on YouTube, buy it on YouTube, DirecTV has it on their on demand, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, if you subscribe to any of those services, you can actually go and find that movie there. And it works like that for any movie you search up. This is a pretty cool application just to know where to find movies that you want to watch online or where it's streaming. But yeah, that wraps up what's on the inside and the outside of my iPhone. If you guys found some cool apps or some cool games that you want to play after watching this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up. But until next time, guys, stay fresh. Peace.